When asked if Jimmy Garoppolo would be on the roster on Sunday, Kyle Shanahan said, um, I can't guarantee that anybody in the world will be alive Sunday, so I can't guarantee who will be on our roster on Sunday. Is that because he's about to drop the biggest draft nuke of all time with the third overall pick on Thursday night? The 49ers select linebacker Micah Parsons, Penn State. Welcome. But that's good sports. I'm Brandon. Christian Wilkins is the greatest draft pick in the history of the game, Perna. Why? Because he's the only man who had the balls to try and put Roger Goodell on IR. The draft is quickly approaching, and we're trying to figure out what's a smokescreen, what's a fire, and what's so outlandish and stupid that the Raiders will definitely try to pull it off. Make sure you watch the draft with us here on YouTube Thursday night. Will Keys and I will be streaming the entire draft. Today, though, I want to talk about the Julio Jones trade, the 49ers mystery shrouded third overall pick, and another surprising retirement. That's good sport. Besides subscribing to this YouTube channel, if you want to support That's Good Sports, you can do it by buying my coffee, Bench Warmer Brew, benchwarmerbrew.com. It's really good coffee. Medium roast organic ethically sourced beans. You ever seen a man slap his beans and try and trick you into buying his coffee? Or you can just Donate your money, patreon.com slash that's good sports. I've got big dick Patreon shout outs for Jamichael Folson, L. McGee, Brandon, the McCaskey should sell the fucking bears perna, Glenn Clark, rotting my brain, Anthony Newell, Blue Ridge Mountain Plumbing now at $230 a month, the best damn plumbing in Central Virginia, Brett, and Jeff Klein. Now on Patreon for all $10 a month donors, every month we do a Zoom call, a group chat, where we just shoot the shit. That might come in the first week of May this month because the draft's kind of screwing that up for me. So heads up guys, that's what's happening. All right, Cowboys linebacker Sean Lee announced he's retiring today after 11 seasons in the Big D. Sean. Lee. Sean. Lee. Sean. Lee. Sean. Lee. That's right. Lee, 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 fucking Lee is retiring. We're talking fucking Sean. Lee. Now, Sean Lee should immediately enter the Hall of Fame of players I didn't realize were still playing. There you go. Take your camo jacket right next to Terrence Newman and Ben Watson. And for years to come, I will be reminded of Sean Lee every time I see... Leighton Vander Esch basically do the exact same thing out there for the boys. Now, Sean Lee was an excellent linebacker early on in Dallas, even getting an All-Pro back in 2016 when uh, the Cowboys were 13-3. and But a constant stream of injuries derailed what could have been a Brian Urlacher-like career. 14 career picks for Lee, two defensive touchdowns, and a couple Pro Bowls for the linebacker is who I thought Josie Jewell could become for the Broncos. A five-star triple threat. But I should have managed my expectations knowing the only song about him was from a fake band whose songs really sucked, instead of a real band who played a fake band with songs that rocked. Now, have the 49ers really narrowed down their quarterback choice to two guys? Or is this a smokescreen? If so, why would they indicate that it's Trey Lance and or Mac Jones? The first pick of the draft is essentially the third pick of the draft, as we all know. And it's down to two players. Per Ian Rappaport, the 49ers are going to choose between either Mac Jones or Trey Lance with the third overall pick. But I really can't think of two more opposite players. But here we are, we've got McCorkle, 
who's the point guard, the operator, the distributor that can step into Kyle Shanahan's offense on day one and keep the machine running. Or Trey Lance, a raw, moldable quarterback with outstanding physical traits, a great arm, and excellent mobility. McCorkle played against SEC defenses and won a national championship with elite teammates. Trey Lance also won a championship, although it was an FCS championship against James Madison. And that dude's been dead for over 200 fucking years. Back when Lance was a first name. My question is, why is Justin Fields not in the running here at three? I'll never understand that. But if it helps him become a Broncos quarterback, I don't think I'll be complaining. So again, is this a smoke screen by the 49ers? Or perhaps a woke screen? Are the 49ers pretending they're going to take Mac Jones over Justin Fields to make the rest of the NFL come to terms with their racial biases when it comes to the quarterback position? That's really all I can come up with at this point because there's no point in creating a smoke screen when the 49ers hold all the cards at number three. Unless, unless of course, they're just trying to promote general chaos who is the brother of General Insurance. And it's why that company does so well. If General Chaos is the case, I'm going to need someone to Photoshop Joker makeup onto Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch in this beautiful photo. After the, we could all be dead by Sunday comments, I think these guys thrive on chaos. Personally, I choose to take back Sunday instead of possibly die on Sunday, but warn whoever they select at three is probably Overrated, you're a lush. Then again, I think Kyle Shanahan's favorite part of that song is It's a good slip, my throat. To me, the craziest news though today is the possible Julio Jones trade. From NFL Update, the Falcons have been listening to trade offers for star wide receiver Julio Jones per Peter King. And Albert Breer. Atlanta has one of the worst cap situations in the league and trading Julio effectively after June 1st would create 15 million in cap space and save the Falcons from the big dead cap hit for 2022. Julio's NFL career started after the Falcons gave up a second and fourth from that draft and a first and fourth for the next draft to select him sixth overall in the 2011 draft. Julio went on to average the most receiving yards per game in NFL history at 95.5. Now they're trying to agree to trade him again during the draft, this time to save money. Julio is heading into his 11th season, had six straight thousand plus yard receiving seasons until he got hurt this last year. I wouldn't trade Jones just to clear up some cap space. But if this is true, then Atlanta taking Kyle Pitts or a receiver makes a lot of sense at four as they get younger and cheaper at the position, but not necessarily better. Here's how the money works and why it factors in greatly for the Falcons who are sitting at under a million dollars in cap space before they enter the draft. While they might agree to a Julio trade during the draft, they won't make that deal until after June 1st because they can split his dead cap over the 2021 and 2022 season. Whoever takes Julio will have to pay out the remaining 38 million on his current contract, which honestly, if he produces a couple thousand yard seasons, is a steal. The fact that they still have to fit their entire draft class under the cap is another argument for why it makes sense for the Falcons to actually trade back and acquire uh, more picks this year and next year. So the question is, who could use Julio Jones? Besides every fucking team in the league. Well, we can rule out one obvious suspect, the 49ers. Even though I'm sure Kyle Shanahan would love to reunite with me and Julio down by the schoolyard. Me and Julio down by the schoolyard. Boom. That's our fourth musical reference in this episode. Hence, the title. <laughs> now, San Francisco already gave up too many picks to move up to three. That's why they won't go after Julio. So, how about a team that's about to draft a young quarterback and could gift that QB with his new best friend in the passing game? If I'm the Jets, 
It makes a lot of sense to deal a couple picks to give Zach Wilson an instant elite target. There's also the Dolphins who have the ammo to do anything anything, possibly even draft Jamar Chase or Kyle Pitts or Devontae Smith and send a pick over for Julio. Then they'd be stacked at the position. Personally, uh, if it's not Matty Ice tossing Julio the rock, there's really only one QB on earth. I want to see dialing it in with Julio and that is Aaron Rodgers. I'll take Aaron Rodgers, Julio Jones, Devontae Adams, and Big Bob Tunyon versus any defense on earth. Now, the Packers are apparently working on a contract extension with Aaron Rodgers, so maybe they could dump Jordan Love off to the Falcons and just wait for the world to stop making fun of them for that horrendous draft pick. If anyone can understand that type of ridicule, it is Atlanta. Now, the team Peter King mentioned for a Julio trade was the Patriots, and of course, Probably besides Tampa Bay or Kansas City, that would be the most cursed destination for Julio Jones to land. Julio deserves to be somewhere a little more lively and colorful, not bland, dark New England. If I was a Falcons fan, I can't think of a more insulting trade. The team that tore my heart out is now going to get one of the greatest Falcons of all time. I don't think so. Patriots fans are so obsessed with a non-Hall of Fame wide receiver that they probably would throw a fit if Julio tried to wear number 11 in New England. It uh, was also mentioned today that the Patriots are trying to move into the top 10 for a QB. The Falcons should agree in principle to trade Julio to New England and then draft the quarterback the Patriots may attempt to trade up for at four. That's their only way to get any revenge at this point. Just ask the Patriots which quarterback they want, tell them you'll trade the pick, then at the last moment say, psych, trick Bill Belichick with one of those novelty sticks of shot gum, then take the guy they wanted all along, then trade Julio to an AFC East team 28 days and three minutes after agreeing to do it with the Patriots. Thanks for watching that Good Sports. Simon and Garfunkel, Taking Back Sunday, Josie and the Pussycats, Tenacious D. We did them all today. Subscribe, watch more videos, you know the drill.